Starting in a standing position, the first Tibetan rite is modified version, just revolving your torso back and forth like a sprinkler. Your feet are rooted into the earth and you're moving at the torso. Pull in your lower belly and let your arms just swing back and forth. The front arm comes across the chest and if your arms are really relaxed, the front arm will hit the back arm and give yourself a little bit of acupressure massage therapy here. But just stay grounded into your feet. This really opens up the spine and move with the breath here. So inhaling one direction, exhaling the other. You can go as fast or as slow as you wish. And this is the modified version. So the full version of this, we're going to revolve all the way around in a full circle. But for this one, if you get dizzy very easily, then this is the best place for you to start. And you want to try to do 7 to 21 rounds. And when you're finished, come to stillness and just find the peace within you here. And take a few breaths. Holding forward, coming down to the floor. Tibetan right number two. You're going to lay all the way down onto the ground, palms flat, spine flat. Inhaling, lift your legs. And as you exhale, reach forward and crunch your abs. Inhale, lower the legs. Exhale, reach. And inhale, lower. So it's a sit and reach core control. As you exhale, lift your legs, feet are flexed. And you want to ground your sacrum into the earth. And reaching forward with your fingertips, just crunch your abs and lift your shoulders and chest and your head in towards your shin. And move with the breath. So you want to do... 7 to 21 rounds of all of the Tibetan rites. So mastery is to get to 21 rounds, and if you can get all the way to 21 and you do all five Tibetan rites, then you're going to try to do a couple times throughout the day. So exhaling forward, use your core control here. Reach forward, crunch your abs, inhale, lower your head and shoulders. Keep your lower back flat, and if you have any lower back issues, you can even put your palms underneath your back if necessary and just do a regular leg lift. But this crunch really works the abs. Exhale, crunch. Inhale, lower. Exhale, lift your legs and your chest. Inhale, down. Keep the core control. Keep pulling the navel to the earth. And after your 21, all the way down onto your back. And the third, Tibetan right, you're going to come up onto your shins seated on your heels, and then sitting all the way up onto your knees. It's a variation of camel pose. So you want to reach down your back and slide your hands down your hamstrings, and then bring your head forward and chin into the chest. So inhaling, arch back like camel, exhale, chin into the chest. Move with the breath. And the Tibetan rites, they kind of go pretty fast. You can go as slow or as fast as you want. You want to keep your core engaged. Tilt your sacrum down and back and really protect your lower back. Tucking your toes under will stabilize your lower body. Uh, if you want, you can be on the tops of the feet as well, though. So inhaling back, lay your head back. Exhaling forward, chin to the chest. Open your heart as you arch back. Inhaling forward. And just move with the breath and listen to your body. If your body is telling you you're having pain in your back, then slow down. And don't arch back as much. But if you want to go into a deeper variation of camel, this is always available to you. Reaching your hands down towards your knees is available. Or, if appropriate, you can even reach your hands down towards your ankles or just slide your hands down the back of your hamstrings. So just make sure you're moving with control. This really opens up the spine. They say the Tibetan rites will keep you youthful. Call them the fountain of youth. Moving with control. If you have any neck issues, be sure to really move the neck with control and uh, really be cautious when throwing your head back. They actually call this one the head, it's like a head and neck throw, but I like to use the word camel pose. It's a little bit more available to people. You don't want to be throwing your head around. The fourth Tibetan right, I'm going to be seated, and in yoga, this posture is called staff pose. Palms are by your side and your spine is straight, shoulders are down and back, legs are flat, and your feet are flexed. Pull your lower belly in and lift the crown of your head to the sky and just take a few breaths. So this really strengthens your body. And then inhale, lift your hips, 
come into table pose and then lower back down into staff pose. So it's back and forth, staff pose, lift your hips into table, really open the shoulders. You want your fingers facing your feet, lift your hips, table position, lower your hips, staff pose. Back and forth, engage the core, engage your triceps when you lift. Really feel the back of your body strengthening, legs are flat when you lower. You can go as fast or as slow as, a, as is appropriate for you and do 7 to 21 rounds. Just basically moving back and forth between staff pose and table position. Try to work your way from 7 rounds all the way to 21 rounds and really see what you can do. If, you, if it is available to you, lay your head all the way back and look back. If that's hurting your neck, then just keep your head up and look forward towards your knees. Either way is fine. Keep your feet about hip distance apart if possible and try to get about 90 degrees at the knees and at the shoulder joint. 7 to 21 rounds. Keep breathing with the movement. Use your core strength here. Lay your head back as you open your heart. Deep cleansing breath. Almost finished with this one. Exhaling, lifting the hips, laying the head back. Inhaling, lower, staff pose. Arch back, staff pose. And final one, take a breath here in staff pose. Preparing for the final of the five Tibetan rites. This one you're going to be very familiar with. So coming onto your hands and knees. Basically, we're going to be moving back and forth between downward dog and upward facing dog. So extending your legs straight, fingers spread wide, relax the neck, spine straight, heels pressing into the earth. And we're just going to inhale up into up dog. And in the Tibetan rites, they just stay on the toes. They don't flip the feet over. So lift your chest, shoulders drop down and back and look up and exhale, press back to downward dog. So inhale up dog, exhale downward facing dog. Moving back and forth with the breath, with control. Shoulders draw down and back when you come into up dog. So really use the strength in the triceps and in the back of your body to open the front of your body. Inhaling forward, lift your heart, arch your back, exhale back to downward dog. 7 to 21 rounds here. Move with control. If you need to, you can just do cobra here if this is too challenging especially by the end of this routine. It's almost a 10 minute routine, but uh, you can take a rest at any time if you want. And if you feel like seven rounds is enough, then just stop there. If you want to try to roll the toes and come into the full traditional upward facing dog pose, then that's fine too. Work with what you want to do here. You can play with it. If you're familiar with the yoga postures, you can try different variations if you want. But just sticking with the traditional Tibetan rites here, Moving back and forth between downward dog, inhaling into upward dog, and really opening the heart to the sky and opening the shoulders and the back, strengthening your body, moving with control. You notice here, they're not moving through, or I'm not moving through chaturanga or plank position. Kind of like just up dog, downward dog, upward dog, downward dog. And uh, so if you want, you can, you can integrate and put chaturanga in between. But uh, it's not really necessary. So you're going to stick with the traditional here. Just inhaling upward facing dog and exhaling back to downward dog. So when you're done with your 7 to 21 rounds, just lower all the way down onto your belly. Make a pillow with your hands. Bring your big toes together behind you so that they're touching. And this is a forward, forward, um, Shavasana, so it's like a variation of Shavasana where you're laying on your belly. Let your body just melt into the earth and integrate all that you've done here. 